Okay, this required practical is about specific heat capacity and we're going to work out the specific heat capacity of aluminium. Uh, if you think from your lessons what specific heat capacity is, it's the energy required to raise one kilogram of a particular substance uh, by one degree Celsius and the substance we're going to use today is aluminium. So we've got lots of equipment so we probably just need to talk through that. That's the, the block that we're going to use to heat up. So we need to provide energy uh, to heat that block up and we're going to use what's called the little immersion heater so we're going to be connecting this to a power supply but we do need to know the amount of energy that's been provided as electrical energy and converted into heat energy to heat this block up now to work out the amount of electrical energy we're going to need ammeters to measure the current and a voltmeter to measure the potential difference which you might call voltage or you might hear me say voltage in a minute when i forget so to do that, if you haven't done it yet, there is a formula, and there's a formula if you multiply the potential difference in volts by the current in amps, you get uh, the, a, a power supplied, and that's what we're going to use. Okay? Now, here's our power supply, so we're going to build that in a second, we'll connect all that together. We'll then uh, put the heater into the block, as so, but we also need to measure the temperature. So we've just got a thermometer, and the block, if you can't see it, has drilled out so we've got a space to put a thermometer to read the temperature. Now we need to read this temperature over a particular time period so we'll probably do it for like six seven minutes we'll see and we're going to use a stopwatch to uh, measure the time period. Okay so last to do uh, first thing like we've done just to show you we, we'll probably need to work out the mass of this. Now I've got the top pan balance here again this is aluminium this should be a one kilogram block or a thousand grams of aluminium so if I just pop that on you might be able to see it's 1000.9 but just to show you it is about a kilogram so there's our kilogram block we now need to build the circuit so if you built if you remember any circuits that you built so far try and do it logically I'm going to move the water I don't know what's going to happen so we're going to come out of power supply and we're going to use direct current and we're going to go into an ammeter Okay, then we'll come out of the ammeter in a series circuit and we're going to go into the immersion heater. Then we'll come out of the immersion heater and go back to the power supply. So you might just be able to see that that is a very simple series circuit. And our voltmeter doesn't connect in series, our voltmeter connects in parallel. So I'm going to connect that in parallel over the immersion heater and that's going to give us the potential difference of that immersion heater. So with the current and the potential difference I can now work out the uh, power that we have supplied to, uh, in electrical terms, the electrical power that we're hoping is going to be converted to heat. Okay, so that's the circuit set up. If you're just going to make sure this is working and to see if we've got any numbers at all and we haven't. Okay, so we've turned this on, we'll make sure that doesn't burn the desk. So we've got a current of about 3.26 amps and a potential difference of about 9.8. I'm going to turn that off just so it doesn't get too hot. So as you've said, that's drilled out so we can put the immersion heater into the aluminium block. And now we need to measure the temperature. Now, the problem when I put the temperature, when I put the thermometer inside there, if you've done this, you might realise that's not a very tight fit. So we have got a problem with there's an air gap around that thermometer. So what we can do to improve the heat transfer, if we just put a little bit of water, I've got a pipette, if we put a little bit of water inside that air gap, when I put the thermometer in now, you can possibly just see, we've now just got a small amount of water on the top, which is telling us that that thermometer is now surrounded by water. Now the first thing we need to do before I forget is we need to measure the temperature of all of this before it starts. And just on there, I'm going to say, I might put my glasses on, sorry. Okay, we've got a starting temperature of about 25 degrees. Okay, so we'll make an out of that. Let me just make an out of that on here. So we now we'll have a starting temperature of 25 degrees. I need to get my stopwatch. Oh, I need to do this worth insulating the whole thing because obviously any 
heat energy we put in, we want to make sure any electrical energy we put in to convert to heat, we want to make sure we don't lose any to the room. So I've just insulated the metal block. We've got our stopwatch is here so I can get ready to start. If I just switch this on and if I, you can see on the computer I've got ready, I'm going to at zero time, I'm going to make a note of the temperature. So our starting temperature is 25 degrees and then after a minute we'll make a note of the temperature and then two minutes we'll make a note of the temperature. There is a reason why this is in seconds which we'll come to after we've finished and this column here, the energy input, we're going to use the power from the meter readings, the current and the potential difference. So it'll just be a matter of switching that on and starting the stopwatch. Okay, so from the experiment you've just seen, we've now got the results. Uh, this we've, we've ran them ran them up a little bit. You might have noticed when you saw on the film that the current and the potential difference were pro pro probably fluctuating just a little bit. So uh, we've said the current is 3.3 amps. The potential difference is 9.9 .9 volts, and you might not, you haven't done the equation yet if you're watching this in year 9, but you will do later on. The power is current times potential difference, so 3.3 times 9.9 .9 to give us 33 watts of power. Okay, here are our results. So what we said we were going to do, we were going to measure the, uh, the temperature every minute. Okay, so these were our results. We let the experiment run. We went from 25 degrees all the way up to 44 degrees. So now what we've got to do is consider the energy needed to get to that each of these temperatures. And to do that, we know that energy, the formula you will have done, is that power is energy divided by time. So we know that the energy is power times the time. So here we've got 33 times 60. We can work out the energy. So if I do that, we can see the magic of Excel. That's 1,980 joules, which was 60 times 33. And we can just do that for all of the other rows, okay? So we would say 120, the time, multiplied by the power, 33, will give us the energy of 3,960, and so on. So we've got some complicated numbers. If you did this in lesson, you might have struggled with this a little bit, plotting your graph, but I'm sure you worked it out. So we've now got a graph of temperature against the energy input for each of those temperatures. And we've got a flat bit and then a straight line. Let's make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so here's that graph. Uh, if we drew a line of best fit, the, the, we've got a straight part, we've got a definite straight part. This bit, if you're thinking, well, why is this flat at the start? Remember that it took a little bit of time for the heat to be transferred through the metal block, then through that little bit of water we put in into the thermometer to call it to, for us to register a temperature rise. So this flat bit we can ignore, our line of best fit we've drawn on uh, the straight part of the graph where the temperature was increasing as we added the energy. This bit of energy would just be the energy being added that went through the material. So what we can now do, just looking at some numbers from the graph, if I kind of did a gradient and we're saying that for this increase in temperature to go from 42, uh, to go from 30 to 42, so here look to go from 30 to 42 there, over there, okay, and then the amount of energy that took, well let's look at the energy difference, here we've got 18,000 and this line will be 8,000, okay, so we've got 12 degrees in terms of our rise in temperature and that took 10,000 joules in terms of the amount of energy, so we can say, a definite statement, 10,000 joules increased the temperature by 12 degrees Celsius. Off that, if we just think about that mathematically, we can say, well, if that amount of energy gave us that increase, 12, well, if we divide this by 12, then 10,000 divided by 12, that's going to be the energy required to raise the temperature by 1 degree. And I've just done that, and it's 833 joules. So that is the energy needed to raise the temperature, 1 kilogram, if you remember our, our uh, block was one kilogram. So this is the energy required to raise the one kilogram block by one degree Celsius, which you should remember, that's what specific heat capacity is. So the specific heat capacity of aluminium, if aluminium we worked out to be 833 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. It's not exactly right, it's a little bit higher, but with, within the realms of experimental.